Hey there, and welcome to City of Churches, where we take a look at different churches in Brooklyn and in Queens. I'm Nick Vavis, and today we're here in Astoria, Queens, to visit Immaculate Conception Church. It's the start of our tour. Now, Immaculate Conception Church, the parish was established in 1924, but this neighborhood's history goes back more than two centuries when it was originally known as Hallett's Cove. Originally Hallett's Cove, the village of Astoria was founded in 1839 and named for wealthy fur merchant John Jacob Astor in hopes that he might invest some of his vast fortune into the area's development. Although his actual investment was somewhat minimal, his name still remains in use to this day. Among the numerous local landmarks sits Astoria Park. Constructed in the 1930s, Astoria Park consists of over 60 acres of woodlands and grassy meadows. There's playgrounds, tennis courts, there's a ballpark, there's track and field over there, and right here there's this Olympic-sized swimming pool, which was actually used for the tryouts in both the 1936 and the 1964 Olympics. Today, every summer, the community continues to enjoy the pool. There's also a 20-foot wide and 10-foot high granite monument honoring those neighborhood heroes who gave their lives during America's involvement in the First World War. The female figure represents victory as she holds in her hands a sword and a wreath, the symbols of war and peace. Each summer, the park features Independence Day fireworks and a concert series with rock and roll and big band, and all this takes place on the grassy meadows behind me. Astoria Park sits along the shore of the East River, and it's located beneath the Hellgate Bridge and the RFK Triborough Bridge. The construction of the Triborough Bridge, which links Queens to Manhattan and to the Bronx, began in 1929. Now, the original plan called for a Manhattan exit in the East 90s, but that plan, it outraged many influential Upper East Siders, and the Manhattan exit was now moved about a mile further uptown. It was completed in 1936 during the Great Depression. The Hellgate Bridge is known in railway lingo as the New York Connecting Railroad Arch Bridge. This engineering marvel was completed in 1917, and at the time it was the biggest bridge of its kind ever constructed. It supports four different sets of railroad tracks. Now, although the river has a bridge that's named Hellgate, the neighborhood has a church that's heavenly. Now, if you walk from Astoria Park, it's only about eight or nine blocks, so it's pretty convenient. And we've arrived at Immaculate Conception. Now, one of the first things you notice when you get here is this imposing steeple. It's the tallest structure in the neighborhood, and you can see it from blocks away. Now, when you first approach the church, there's something interesting. There's a niche in the front corner of the church, and it displays the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She's the patroness of the parish. She's also, it reads, the patroness of the United States as well. And one last thing before we head in, there's lettering above the front entrance, and it's stylized in such a way that it makes the church appear older than it actually is. The cornerstone reads 1950, when the church was built. But there's a cornerstone on the other side of the entranceway that reads 1935. Now, I'm not sure what that's all about, but I think we should head in and ask Monsignor Ferrarisi, and he's going to take us to a tour as well. So follow me. Let's go.
Monsignor. Hey, Nick. How are you? How are you? Welcome to Immaculate Concession Church. It's good Church. to see you. Thank you so much, good to see you Monsignor Ferrarisi. Well, listen, I appreciate you taking the time. I've got a lot of questions sure. about the history of the church, Immaculate Conception. Immaculate Conception Parish was founded in 1924. Reverend Michael Lopez was the first pastor. Mm. It was originally 24 parishioners in a house on uh, Ditmars Boulevard. Okay. And within one year, the old church, which was where the school was, uh, okay. was uh, begun, and there was the first mass on October 4th of 1924, and that became the center, the school and the, and the parish church all in one building. So the establishment of the parish was 1924. 24. One of the interesting contributors to it mm -hmm. was when, when the uh, original pastor, Father uh, Lopez, died. Okay. He, had, he had already left here in 1933. He was here from 24 to 33. He left and uh, became a pastor at St. Bridget's in Westbury. Okay. When he died, he left $73,000, which was a lot of money That's then. That's a lot of money, okay. He left $73,000 for the construction of a new church. The building itself, 1950, correct, right. was constructed. How long does that take, by the way, to build a church? Well, about a year. It does take like yeah, a year? Yeah. I'm looking straight behind you and I see a statue of? That's Padre Pio. That's our most recent okay. uh, uh, um, family in the parish, the Sacramenti family, uh, donated that. Uh, just recently we had a mass of dedication for the statue of Padre Pio. How new is that? You said it's uh, It's new. within the last the month. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and it uh, was from Italy, uh, done by hand. So okay. it's a very beautiful uh, addition to a very beautiful church. Okay. And then behind me, there's another statue. Well, the, the Pietà was originally in the old church and that was brought to the, to the new church. Um, it also, you will notice too, that two different kinds of stained glass windows here. You have some of the older ones, which were from the original church, which was in the school, and that were brought over here. And then you have some more modern ones. But you see right okay. above the Pietà. Well, that mimics, yeah, Exactly, exactly. Um, uh, that was put in when the church was put in. One of the prominent ones, by the way, is in the back there, what's Celtic Cross. Mm -hmm. um, the second pastor, who was pastor for 30 years from uh, uh, 1933 to 1963, was Monsignor Edward Higgins. Uh, really, okay. he's the one that actually uh, built the church and the rectory and the convent, etc. But that is the um, Celtic Cross of the Catholic War Veterans. Uh, Monsignor Higgins founded this national organization with post number one here. Okay. It's the only Catholic organization that has a congressional charter that was given to it by, uh, under President Reagan. Okay. We're walking yeah. by um, the Baptist the Baptist, yeah. yeah, the baptismal. Baptismal font. Baptismal right. font. Baptismal okay. font. Now this uh, font was in this church in the baptistry in the back. This church was renovated a couple of times. Mm -hmm. The last renovation in 1992, this was placed here. The reason why it's here is that when the casket is brought in uh, for funeral mass, it's stopped here and the holy water is the taken right water. from the font. The architecture itself I want to talk about because it's kind of the old meets the new, and uh, the beams itself, I've seen a yeah. lot of churches where it's wooden, yeah. and these are kind of staggered. I mean, yeah. maybe you can explain that Well, the, 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 the architect it, but... of this church was Henry McGill, who specialized in another, a lot of different kinds of architecture, one of which uh, is um, this Art Deco. So it has a kind of an Art Deco okay. feel to it. Um, and um, the alternating arches uh, is yeah, I've never seen that. I've never seen a church like this. It's kind of confusing. Um, it, what it what it's what it's trying to do is almost like an iris opening up to the center of the church. So if you're in the back, you see uh, this kind of like um, opening, like an iris opening, okay. or uh, one of the the eye just goes right to the center and, and to the altar area. Okay. Which is uh, certainly the next thing I have a lot of questions about. Sure. Uh, is the altar and it's. From what I've seen of other altars, it's quite modern, the way it looks to me, and it's got the canopy, which is glorious. It actually matches the tabernacle canopy almost with the gold dome. Well, so there, there's a, a number. About... There are a number of renovations. First of all, it was built in uh, dedicated in 1951, and uh, originally the altar was against the wall, uh, and there was no baldacchino. This baldacchino, baldacchino is the name yeah, for that. right? It uh, it was placed in the okay. 1967 when. Uh, Father Lyons, who took over after um, 
uh, Monsignor Higgins retired in 63 and um, created a, a sense of space here, which was very, very beautiful. Uh, it's, a, it's a great uh, sanctuary for liturgies because of its spaciousness and um, its simplicity. And so it's a very simple design with the, the cross. The focus is so clear. Uh -huh. Everything, both the, the arches and the baldacchino, enshrine the moment of the Eucharist, which is so uh, powerful in the uh, liturgy. And the simplicity of it is what makes it so effective. I noticed when I first came in, there were two cornerstones. Tell me about that. Yeah, that's really odd. You, you never expect two uh, cornerstones of the same building. Well, one of them was for the church, uh, mm -hmm. 19, uh, 51. But the other one, the 1935 one, was not the old church. The 1935 was the founding of the Catholic War Veterans. Again, Monsignor Higgins being very proud of that. He wanted a cornerstone for the organization to be right embedded in the church. Okay. Especially. The lighting itself that's um, pretty much all around us right now, a lot is coming through the stained glass windows, yeah. which I wanted to talk about and ask you. These are the newer ones, I can tell. Yeah, these the color, stained glass windows right? that were put in slightly after the church was built. Monsignor Higgins donated the nativity window mm -hmm. and the Annunciation window was donated in memory of Father Lopez, who had deceased at this point. Monsignor Higgins uh, really, um, in, in the design of the church, had a hand mm -hmm. and you could see remnants of the Catholic war veterans in, so many of the details. Uh, if you look at the, carefully at the nativity window, mm -hmm. there's like cannon on the side and right. muskets and uh, cross swords. And for some reason, he uh, felt it was like the coming of Christ was the end of war. Mm -hmm. So he had these signs of war kind of off to the sides and, and Jesus, the Prince of Peace in the center. So it's telling a story that's also yeah, the, the symbols is all there. You Sim have to like, look at it very carefully. Other... Yeah, because it's not the... Mm -hmm. These it's, it's, here... And then the two on the other side? Yeah, these here are even more interesting because... Um, these have some images in there that I've just never seen before. Yeah, so there's yeah. the cradling of the church and the American flag. Yeah, yeah. They, uh, if you notice carefully, um, uh, Mary is holding uh, the, actually the church as she's assumed into heaven. First of all, in heaven, of course, you see the papal flag. We expect the papal flag in heaven, but mm -hmm. there's also the American flag. Uh, I'd say Higgins was extremely patriotic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, apparently. Very it's much. almost like only Americans go up to heaven. What and, is that and supposed yeah, to be? And, <laughs> and you, you see all these images, again, of, of World War II. Yeah. There's a little panel of the uh, atomic blast on Hiroshima. Uh, I've oh, never seen that. that, that. I've it was never a mushroom. Seen, yeah, yeah mushroom I've never cloud. seen that in any wow. kind of stained glass. In the uh, coronation, mm -hmm. the next window, you see the Catholic War Veteran um, cross again, right. and Japan 1952 and West Germany 1952, okay. which at that point in 1952 when the windows were done, uh, there was peace at that point uh, with Japan and, and, and West Germany at that time. So, and on the top it says, Queen of, Queen Peace, of Peace, pray for pray us. For us. So, so the, the whole images of it, uh, this is a church that came out of right after World War II, mm -hmm. after an incredibly uh, painful and difficult period of our church history. It was also very anti-communist at the time. And at the foot of the Blessed Mother in the Assumption is the, uh, the, the hammer, mm -hmm. which is yeah. part of the hammer and sickle of communism. She kind of not only, uh, triumphed over Satan, but mm -hmm. over communism as well. Monsignor Higgins was a very singular type of person. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea of the military uh, being central to our country mm -hmm. was very much part of his worldview. And, and of course, so, Monsignor Higgins, when this church was built, we're talking about 15,000 people coming uh, every Sunday to mass, 15,000. And so he built this so, chapel area Call it the chapel, but it, it, interestingly enough, uh, when Monsignor Higgins uh, built the uh, church, he really wanted maximum seating. It seats about a thousand, as I said. Okay. This uh, area here is very popular with parishioners, which is very interesting because of its intimacy, mm. and it's got a very good view of oh, the yeah. uh, of the sanctuary of the uh, and a very close-up view of the sanctuary, with maintaining kind of a country feel to the church. And the three statues in the back. 
This was a recent uh, addition uh, in the 1992 renovation when the Holy Family was enshrined. Then Monsignor Basio, who was the pastor before me, uh, he really felt the family was key to the future of the country and of church, etc. And on the other side is Our Lady of Lourdes, of course, she said, I am the Immaculate Conception. The reason, and Our Lady of Guadalupe, who's the Empress of the Americas and patron saint. Okay. Yeah, on this, uh, we have a beautiful statue of Our Lady that here in the, in the statue. Yes. Uh, it's a particularly um, important thing because it, 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 it's the central theme of the chapel and right. it should be her uh, uh, center. On, on this side, we have St. Jude on the left and uh, uh, in the center, we have St. Anthony, who's one of our most popular of the saints. Okay. Uh, we also have an interesting uh, picture of Padre Pio. About a year ago, a family in the parish whose artist was the official artist of the Padre Pio Shrine in Saint, San Giovanni Rotondo in Italy. Actually, that's an oil painting uh, of Padre Pio from the artist's own recollection of him who knew him. Another thing, interesting thing about the chapel is that there's a separate entrance uh, that goes from uh, our convent where the Holy Union sisters have been here since, okay. since the Franciscan sisters left in 46. They've been here staffing the school and, and the ministries in the parish. And that goes into another area of the back. That we haven't seen. We haven't seen that yet. So speaking of areas we haven't seen and exits, there is one last area outside in the back of the church that has one last shrine to the Blessed Mother. And it's very unique. And I haven't seen it myself, nor have some of the viewers. Correct, Monsignor? You're right. And we're back. And so I'm going to ask Monsignor to give me a little more history and information about the Blessed Mother and the Grotto. Of course, you know, the, the Our Lady of Lourdes is very important to Monsignor Higgins and to the parish because the Blessed Mother said, I am the Immaculate Conception to Bernadette. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to uh, remember his dad who had passed away. So in 1934, Monsignor Higgins put up a grotto with the Blessed Mother of Lourdes and Bernadette. It was originally on the corner, before this church was built, on the corner of Dittmar's and uh, 29th Street. Mm -hmm. It was then moved uh, to the school area. And uh, finally, it's now in uh, the grotto area where there's a separate entrance to the church in the back from, the, uh, from 31st Street. It's meant to focus attention on our Blessed Lady. And uh, it's amazing, it's, you'll see it's kind of like very rough hewn. It's mm -hmm. amazing that they could move it uh, two different times. Is that accessible at any time? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's outdoors, you know, it's right near our parking, one of our parking lots. And uh, people coming into the entrance for the chapel mm. area um, have to pass it. It's, uh, and it's now illuminated, so it's uh, really prominent. Understood. Well, Monsignor Farisi, I cannot thank you enough for taking time to show myself around, to show the viewers around. Thank you. Thank Great you. history, Good. very entertaining. And then it concludes this episode of City of Churches. I hope you've learned as much as I have. We're here in Astoria at Immaculate Conception. And if you'd like to learn more about other churches we profiled or more about City of Churches, you can visit our website at netny.net. Until next time, we'll see you on City of Churches.
On the next episode, you'll be joining me here at Our Lady of Perpetual Health Basilica in Sunset Park, Brooklyn, a really magnificent and beautiful basilica. And it's got something very unique that I really think you'll enjoy, something you'll only see in this church. So until then, I'll be looking for you right here on City of Churches.